Hello, everybody, and welcome to our online academy here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. I'm so excited to be joining you today for World Ocean Day. I brought a few friends with me to help celebrate. Now, my friends, we are going to be exploring for our celebration today a very unique habitat, a place where an animal calls its home. Now, we're looking at maybe a habitat that you've explored with us in some of our other programs. This is a kelp forest. This is something that we would find a little closer to our shores, but I wanted to explore a little farther out. Now, between where the aquarium is, offshore, past where you would find our harbors, out into what we would call the open ocean. This is where it can be really deep and you would find pretty much just a whole lot of water. You wouldn't have some of these other elements that you would find in an ecosystem like this, <laughs> like our rocks and our seaweed. Hello there, giant sea bass. And we would find animals that are just a little bit different than the ones here. But some of these animals will eventually go out into the open ocean using this space like this as a nursery. So what is an open ocean habitat? Well, we're going to be exploring what this habitat looks like, the animals that live there, and we're going to do this through art. We're going to use our observational skill. So we're going to look very closely at some pictures and videos and webcams today and look to see what might be interesting to help us find clues about how an animal might survive in that ecosystem. So just like on land, we find lots and lots of different habitats. And that could be up in a mountain, a forest or jungle, rivers, caves. Those are all examples of different kinds of habitats, mainly made up because the non-living features of that habitat are different. It's the same thing when we go to the open ocean. So the open ocean has basically just a whole lot of water. There's sunlight coming down. Now, what do animals eat then? How do they survive? Well, I wanna introduce you to a few of those animals. The first one I wanna introduce you has no bones, and you probably wouldn't wanna give it a hug because it would sting you. I'll give you a hint, you ready? It drifts through the water. Now, as we get ready, we're gonna actually show you first a webcam with these amazing critters. If you wanted to grab something to draw with me, we're going to, again, explore through art. So we're gonna look for details. Oh my goodness, this is the first animal. Did you guess it? Yeah, it's a jelly. You can make yourself into a fabulous jelly by opening and closing this part right here. This is called the bell. You might recognize some of these other parts. Now, scientists, as we get ready to draw, and I'm gonna be drawing with you, let's first look at our shapes and colors to help us not only identify our animal, but make sure that we're drawing it so that it represents our, our jelly here. Now, your drawings do not have to look like mine. I'm gonna do my best, and I'm sure you're gonna do your best, but they do not have to look the same. Now. If we're going to draw this shape right here, how would you describe that? Yeah, it kind of looks like a half circle, right? So it kind of has these half circles. So we'll make sure that we include this bell shape. And I think I have, oh, there it is. I have my stuffed animal model right here with me. So we're looking at this jelly on its side as it cruises through the water. On the very top though, it has some additional features. So if you were to look down and watch a jelly, you would probably see this circle. So we have kind of this half circle from the side. Oh, thank you. I have James who's helping me with all of our green screen studio magic here today. And he just put up our jelly. So our jellies are moving. I want you just to take a moment and watch how they're moving using those bells. Yeah, did you notice that they're kind of squeezing them together? Yeah, so those, that half shape, half circle shape from the side squeezes together and then opens. And that's how they can kind of move themselves through the water. So jellies are really good at drifting in the open ocean. And they're drifting around 
and protecting themselves with these things right here. Yeah, do you know what those are called? Oh, here's a jelly. <laughs> Up close. Thanks. Thanks, jelly. Yeah, if you look, there's more than one thing that's kind of dangling underneath the jelly, right? So you have tentacles. Why might an animal have tentacles? There's, not, there's no bones, no face, no, no mouth, no eyes, but they definitely have tentacles. Well, if you're thinking protection, you got it. So these are stinging tentacles. Remember earlier I said you don't want to give a hug to a jelly? Yeah, that's probably a good idea. So jellies defend themselves with these long stinging tentacles on the side. But these tentacles are also really great at stinging food. Anything that could stick to their tentacles. With, if we were to look under a microscope, they have a little harpoon. And anytime something touches it, that harpoon is on a little spring and it goes whoosh, and grabs its prey. So it doesn't even have to think about what it touches or hunt anything down. It just has to drift and make sure that it stays near the surface of the water, so not too deep, because its food loves the sunlight. Therefore, a jelly, excuse me, jelly, loves the sunlight. So we'll talk a little bit about that food in a moment, but you might have also noticed this really floofy bit coming down. This is part of its food story as well. So although the stinging tentacles on the outside are for protection and then initially stinging their food, they have to be able to bring that food to the middle of their body where the, that bell is so that they can digest their food. So these um, fluffy tentacles here, they're called oral arms, help move that, those food particles. We talked a little bit about drifting. Well, the food that they're trying to eat also drifts. Have you heard of plankton before? Yeah. Jellies are actually considered plankton too. So anything that really drifts through the ocean is considered plankton. You and I could be considered plankton if we were just to let the currents move us through our ocean habitat. So we'll go ahead and we're gonna start drawing our jelly. And then as we take a pause, maybe we'll look at pictures of plankton, their food source, so we can kind of get a better idea. So I have a special camera so that I can share with you the drawings as we make them together. So I'm going to go over to my document camera here. And we'll start drawing our jellies. I believe we are pretty zoomed in. There's my hand. Oh, no, we're good. We're good. Awesome. So I'm going to make some room because I have lots of fun critters to draw with you today. So I'm going to go ahead again and start with that half circle. So you can make that half circle with me here too. And then we did see a lot of those kind of, I'll start with our big fluffy tentacles. There we go. Now in order to sting the food to get into those big fluffy tentacles, those oral arms, I'm gonna add those long stinging ones to drift as well. Again, you don't want to give this jelly a hug. So on the very top though, we mentioned on that bell that the food is going to go up there to be digested, just like our stomachs do for us. And instead of just having one main stomach, they actually have four stomachs that are kind of in this horseshoe shape. Some, some actually have more than four. They have one on the other side. Kind of looks like this, like my drawing here. And those four stomachs, thank you, Mr. James. Can you find them? One, you can add on yours. Two, three, four. Some of them have five, six. That's where they would take their food and they digest it so they can use that as energy to keep fueling all of that crazy swimming motion that we've been seeing. This is a moon jelly. Now, if you look closely, you can find baby jellies in here. There they are. Look at those little things. Yeah, they don't quite look like jellies yet, but they drift around. Again, they're drifting just like 
with the food that they like to eat called plankton. So I'm going to go ahead and let's take a break and look at that plankton. So if you need a moment to continue to draw your jelly, you can go ahead and keep doing that. You can always pause. Oh my goodness. So under a microscope, this is what that animal plankton would look like. Oh my. So we have in here lots of different kinds of animals. Now some of these animals will stay plankton their whole life. Very small, they drift around, and some of them are baby animals. Actually, we're seeing some of them in here. Whoa, we're going crazy. Some of them are baby stars and crabs and fish and jellies, just like we were looking at. And they have this whole tiny little ecosystem where they can eat each other and prey on each other. And some of them eat meat, like other jellies, and some of them eat veggies. So there's a whole other group of marine plankton, so ocean plankton, that are just like plants. So they're marine algae. They're a little different, but they still use sunlight to create food. And that's really important. In fact, it's so important that it starts an entire food web. So having very tiny food to be able to feed other food, to feed bigger food, really plays a role in these ocean ecosystems. So we have a whole tiny little habitat happening in this open ecosystem, this open ocean of these drifting animals. And they're fed upon by jellies, which I think are really cool. Okay, so this is what they eat and sting and bring into those stomachs. We saw a little bit about how the jellies are moving through the water. Let's go ahead and meet another animal. This animal is one of my favorites. It looks like a giant pancake. And it can be huge. It can be really big. It can be a couple thousand pounds. And it can grow over 10 feet from one side of its fin to the other. So it is called a... Um, Mola Mola or ocean sunfish. There we go. And it is the, it can be the heaviest of what we call a bony fish. So a fish that has a skeleton made up of bones. So this is that ocean sunfish. My goodness. I told you, I warned you, it looked like a pancake. So it is kind of flat. And if it were to turn to look at you, it'd be pretty narrow down the middle. And it moves through the ocean and it loves to eat things like jellies and soft squishy animals like tunicates. So what we're looking at here, I'll show you here is the mouth and then its fins are on the very top and the bottom and it has this back tail fin, our caudal fin. Now my friends, we're gonna try drawing this animal. Let's start with thinking about the shape that we're seeing here. How would you describe that shape? Yeah, are you kind of seeing that circle or oval? Me too. I'm also seeing some other shapes. What shape do you see here that we can maybe include? Yeah, we have triangle shapes for that top and bottom fin. And they move these fins around. Here's my, here's my mola. They move them around top and bottom and they drift. They can push themselves a lot, um, a lot easier through the water than like a jelly, but they, they don't swim too fast. And we do get them off of our California coast. I had an opportunity to see a school of baby mola mola. They were really cute. Looked like little pancakes jumping out of the water. And then they have their gill opening right here and another fin. So we'll make sure that we include those. I love their mouths. Their mouths are kind of just like, ah. You kind of see that. I think we have one more photo that we can maybe show. This photo is how they get the name ocean sunfish. So sometimes they will swim to the top, they lay on their side, and because they get things that grow on them, they like to have birds, marine birds like seagulls, sometimes help them out by picking and cleaning off the outside layers of their body. So when we're out on our whale watch trip, sometimes we have this encounter. Look at that mouth! That's that mouth I was talking about that we're going to definitely include. So it's definitely an unusual animal. And then it'll come to the surface and kind of sun itself. And I have, in fact, seen a seagull standing on top on the whale watch. So from a distance, I thought I was seeing a floating bird. But really, it was a bird standing on top of a mola mola, which is awesome. 
All right, so we're going to draw this animal. Let's go ahead and we'll make some room. I'm going to draw it right in front of its food source here, the jelly, like it was going to eat the jelly. So I'll start by adding it as a nice kind of oval shape like that. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. Now we did see some other shapes, didn't we? So we saw that nice tall fin on the top. And we had a fin at the bottom, so you can kind of add that in. And it had this tail fin, so you can make a line here. And then we're going to kind of connect them with a, a waviness on this side, because they had that kind of wavy caudal or tail fin. Still kind of looks like a pancake. Let's go ahead and fix that by adding an eye. That might help. So we're going to add a little eye here. And we mentioned that it was a fish, so it has gills. Gills are used to take little tiny bubbles of oxygen that floats in the water. So they breathe in the water, and the gills help take that oxygen from the water. It has a little bit of a different um, gill opening on the side. So instead of having kind of that normal fishy face opening, it has just this little circle like this on the side. But we need a mouth so it can help breathe. And again, it has this kind of quirky open mouth. So I'm going to add that right in there. Ta-da! And then it had a side fin to help it navigate a little bit and steer. So I'm going to add that in there on the side. All right. Well, there's the mola. So we have, that's a very big jelly it's going after. Good luck. Mola might eat a jelly that's a little t smaller. So how can this animal, if we said not to hug a jelly, how can this animal eat this one that has stinging cells? Well, they have a really thick outside, almost leathery covering to their bodies. It's a little bit different than other fish, and that really helps protect them. Their eyes are also a little higher away from their mouth. So that's another piece that will help them a little bit. So I've introduced you to two open ocean. Another name for this is what we call pelagic. Um, pelagic, just a science word for those open ocean habitats. Now you're probably thinking, what else might live in that big open ocean? Well, this animal loves to eat things like smaller plankton and smaller fish. You might be familiar with this animal. It also loves to sometimes jump out of the water, and they can be quite large. It's a favorite of many. So this is our whale friend that we're thinking of. This is, in particular, a humpback whale. Well, how did I know this is a humpback whale? Well, there are many different kinds of whales out there. This one happens to have really long side flippers. These flippers are pectoral flippers. So if you want it to be a humpback whale versus one of our smaller types that maybe have like a little, little side pectoral fins, they have really long pectoral fins. And to me, as they move through the water, they almost look like dancers. They love to jump out of the water and they move their big pectoral flippers around, which are this nice bright color probably makes it a little easier for their friends to see them when they're showing off. Sometimes they lay at the surface and they can move around. So they can steer with these long pectoral flippers, but they really push themselves with this tail fin, which has a fun name. You ready? It's called a fluke. And that fluke goes up and down to push them. I think, uh, Mr. James, we have a video that he wanted to show you. So see if you can spot those big white pectoral uh, flippers on the side and that nice, there you go, fluke at the back. Oh, oh, we're also seeing how they breathe. They have, it's kind of like a nose at the top of their head called a blowhole. Oh, and did you see underneath they had that nice white coloration so they are black and white, and that kind of helps them in their habitat. So it's a little harder to see them, 
except for when they want to be seen. So if they're lifting their flippers up, you can kind of see them a little easier. Oh, there's another good view. We'll have to add that in. That's called their blowhole. They have this little fin on the top, and they have some it's kind of a bumpy ridge line towards their fluke. That's, a, that's one of the reasons why they're called humpbacks. You can kind of see that. So as they get ready to dive, you can kind of really see that top dorsal fin on their back. Are you ready to draw this? Now, it might sound kind of silly, but to me, I think when we start off, it's going to look a little bit like a potato. But that's okay, because we're going to make it look a little bit more whale-like. But if we go back to that original photo that Mr. James had put up there, thank you so much. Can you kind of see it? Yeah, I can kind of see that potato shape. So it's like an oval, but we'll make sure that we include, you know, it has that um, nice belly in there and it has that longer face. So mine is gonna be a little bit more cartoon. Again, yours does not have to look like mine. Maybe you'll look a little closer to our image here, but we're gonna use this as reference as we look closely and see if there are any features on this animal that might help it survive. I think in our video, we did see a couple of those, so we might want to include that. But first, just like we did for our jelly and for our mola mola, we're gonna start by looking at this mammal's body shape. Okay, let's see, where on my drawing can I fit? I think I'm going to have to go to the top, but that's okay. We'll see if I can fit my potato down here. Oh, there it is, looking for my pen again. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and give it my best go. We're going to kind of come down up and I'm going to erase a few things once I have a better shape planned out here. It's going to get a little crowded in my open ocean. All right, yay! All right, there's the start of my potato. Thank you, Mr. James. You've given us a nice drawing. I can see how mine doesn't look as close, but that's okay. So <laughs> This hopefully encourages everybody that they can draw. If I'm doing this, you can do it. Now I'm gonna make this mouth. The mouth is kind of interesting because it's holding special tools or adaptations for it to grab its food. It has this kind of long downward mouth here. Has this adorable little eye. I'm gonna make sure the eye is down a little bit lower on its, on its face. It still looks like a potato, so we're gonna draw, draw in those really large pectoral fins on the side here. We'll pretend the mola has a little bit more space. So we'll come down a little bit. Oh, we've got some music to go along with this. All right, I'm gonna erase a little bit here. So we have these really long pectoral fins on the sides. I'm going to add that little hump that we said that gives it its name. So I'm going to add the pectoral fin or the dorsal fin on the top there. And then I'm going to add in that fluke. So the fluke kind of comes out on either side here. Now, you may also notice that had what looked like, so it has this little thing on top, so I'm gonna include that as its blowhole, so we don't forget that it, just like us, is a mammal, it's breathing air. And then it also has these little bumps on its face. Those are called its tubercles. I think that's adorable. And those are little places where hair grows. Now to be a mammal like us, this mammal has hair, breathes air, has live birth, drinks milk when it's a baby, and is warm-blooded. So that's why it has this nice big round stature to its body. It's because it's covered in a special fat called blubber that keeps it warm. So the fish and the jelly, they don't care if it's really cold out there sometimes in the open ocean, but the whale does. The whale has to have some of these special adaptations because it's a mammal like us, like having that thick layer of blubber, 
having a nose on the top of its head called that blowhole. So these are all really special features for this mammal. Now we talked about food, right? Do you like food? I love food. So does our whales. But because they're living in the open ocean and they have a special diet, they need to have special tools in their mouth to eat their food. So not only is this a mammal, it's a whale, it's a special group, part of a special group of whales called baleen whales. They are filter feeders. They eat pretty small fish or shrimp, and they have these really fantastic mouths. Thank you, Mr. James. Not only are we seeing inside the whale's mouth, but we're looking at the tubercles that we just drew and the blowhole. So you can see the shape of the mouth, right? It goes straight and then dips down. And again, we added the eye. Here's the eye. It's pretty low on its body. But wait, did you see what's inside of its mouth? It's not teeth, is it? It has these long, hairy plates, kind of like a mustache inside the whale's mouth. And these plates help it filter out some of the food. So what they normally do is they will travel together, sometimes um, in a small or, or a medium size, what we call pod, and they can work together to grab things, again, like small fish and krill. They will even release sometimes bubbles to help trap their food in a small circle, kind of like we call it a bubble net. And then they will come up from the bottom, raw, and they scoop up. They open their mouth really wide, and they have, do you see these lines? These lines allow their throat to expand like an accordion to take in that water, and then they use a really powerful tongue to push all of that water through those baleen plates. I have some uh, an example of baleen here in our studio. This is just a very small piece of humpback whale baleen. So you can see these hairy plates. It's constantly growing in their mouth from the very top. They don't have it in the bottom. And as the food um, is pushed, the water is pushed through, this lines the inside of their mouth, it gets trapped. So it's like a net. And then on the other side, they have where the water would filter out of their mouth, which is pretty awesome. So again, this is an adaptation for an animal that eats sometimes really small things and has to filter it when there's not really a place to capture it. You know, there's not like a, a small nook or rock area to, to push up against so they can use their bubble netting or they work together or they can swim pretty fast and then scoop with that big mouth to grab it in. Yeah, let's take a look here. Now, when we're out on our whale watch, we often look for birds. Birds are sometimes also taking advantage of the fact that the, the whales have corralled their food or found food. And they will feed right at the top there because the, <laughs> oh, there we go, because the whales have found their food, which is pretty amazing. Now, this water is pretty dark. Off of our coast here in California, our water is kind of a greenish, dark blue color. If you were to go to places like the tropics, the environment's different. This is because our ocean, especially right off of our coast, is really soupy. It's full of plankton. But that's awesome because it brings all of those wonderful critters that we've been talking about. Now, we've only talked about three animals. Can you imagine how many more animals live in this really interesting open ocean habitat? Yeah, so I encourage you, my friends, to help celebrate World Ocean Day. You should explore a few more animals and you can continue to add it to your own art and build on that, um, that pelagic habitat as we've been talking about it. Now, my friends, if you have any questions, you can always email us here at the aquarium for our Aquarium Online Academy line at live at lbaop.org. So that's live at lbaop.org, like Long Beach Aquarium of Pacific. My friends, it's been wonderful to celebrate World Ocean Day with you. I hope you continue to explore about our oceans and take care for the rest of the day. Thank you, everyone.